quick revision video on rate determining step and reaction mechanisms. We'll just start by explaining what we mean by rate determining step or RDS for short. Reactions often occur in a series of steps. If you think about reaction mechanism, there's various steps. The slowest step in the mechanism is what we call the rate determining step. And the rate equation tells us the molecularity, and that just means the number of particles involved in the rate determinant step. So, for example, the reaction between nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide, making nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide, the rate equation, this has been determined experimentally, maybe by initial rates or something like that, is coming out at rate equals K, concentration of NO2 squared. So what that means is the rate determining step involves two molecules of NO2 reacting together. So when you come to suggest a reaction mechanism, it has to satisfy two conditions. So for a reaction mechanism to be valid, the reactants in the rate determining step must be consistent with the rate equation. So just like that example I've just shown you with the two molecules of NO2 because it was concentration of NO2 squared in the rate equation. So that's the first requirement. The second requirement is the sum of all of the steps. So when you add them all together and cancel out the terms that are on both sides, you must end up with the overall reaction equation. So we'll look at that example we've already seen. We're going to come up with a two-step mechanism for this reaction. So the first thing I'll do is create a table like this one. So you can see we've got a row for the rate determinant step and a row for the other step. And I've also got the overall equation pre-populated. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the reactants from the rate determinant step just to make sure that we're satisfying the first requirement. And now we'll just build up the rest of the mechanism by using the what we've already got and the overall equation. So you can see we've got to make one mole of NO. So let's make that in the rate determinant step. And that means that the leftovers of the rate determinant step reactants are going to give us an NO3 molecule. Now you can see that doesn't feature in the overall equation. We need to get rid of that. So this is obviously acting as an intermediate. So if we bring it in as a reactant in the other step, and now we need to bring some carbon into play. So let's bring carbon monoxide in. So we need that as a reactant. So where do we go from here? Well, you'll notice we've at the moment got two NO2s in the um, first step, we need to get rid of one of those because we've only got one in the overall equation. So if we make that a product of the other step, and that means that the leftovers of the atoms are going to give us the CO2 that we need. So we're just going to check that we are getting the overall reaction equation when we add the two steps together. So we're cancelling out those NO3s. Remember that was an intermediate. And we can cancel the NO2s down from 2 to 1. So, yep, we've got the overall equation. So that reaction mechanism would be valid. The next one we're going to look at, slightly more complicated. It's a three-step mechanism, but we've been given the second step. So we've got the rate equation, rate equals K, concentration of propanone multiplied by the concentration of the H plus ion. First order for both, so we just need those in the reactants for step one. So the next thing I would suggest is we need to get rid of this, so when we cancel down, so let's make it a product here. So that obviously does balance, and you notice that box has disappeared, we don't need that one. So then if we look at the products of the step two that we've been given, well, this doesn't feature in the overall equation, so we need to get rid of that. So we'll bring it in as a reactant in the step three. Now, we need to bring some iodine into play. So if we make that a reactant in step three, that's going to give us an I2 reactant when we add these three steps together. So what else are we missing? We need to make the CH3COCH2I as a product. So that would work in step three. And we also need to make HI. So the final thing we're going to do is cancel the like terms and add the steps together with what's left. So the H pluses cancel, this ion cancels, and so does this substance here. 
So what we're left with is I2 plus propanone gives us the product we want and HI. So that is a valid mechanism.